In our previous video, we were looking at capacity planning using Python. And we're going to continue that discussion in this video. And if you are following along in our Python workbook, go to drstephpowers.github.io slash mgmt dash in dash Python. So that's mgmt dash in dash Python. We're currently working from this capacity planning workbook. So click on that and go into GitHub. You'll then want to link to this Google Collab workbook. Click on that. Make sure you sign into your Google Drive. That gives you the ability to run the code. And make sure you copy it to your drive. That gives you the ability to edit the code. So it becomes yours to do with uh, as you wish. We are continuing our discussion. So we're actually working on this section here called bottlenecks and how they impact capacity. And so I'm just going to switch over to the version where I am signed in. And in the previous video, we looked at capacity planning and the capacity planning process. And so we were forecasting our demand. And here we're looking at, at hospital surgeries. And we were assuming that the production was just half an hour per surgery. So we could then determine what kind of, uh, how many surgical suites, how many operating tables do we need? So let's look at one where there are multiple steps in the production process. So let's look at this here. Let's suppose you are Subway sandwich shop and you are doing some capacity planning. So in order for you to make a sandwich, we need to cut the meat. We need to cut some vegetables. We need to make some bread. And when the customer comes in, we need to assemble it as they order it. So here we have multiple stages in the production process. The key point here is that the bottleneck in our production process limits our capacity. And so we want to consider here is how, what is our capacity based on this process and what changes could we make to increase the capacity? So if we're doing this in Python, we're actually just doing some simple math calculations that you could do by hand. Uh, but we're going to do it in Python. And the benefit of doing it in Python here is we can create a definition in Python. And it allows us then to run different kind of scenarios. So we're going to define capacity. We're creating a definition here. And we're going to have the inputs to this definition. We'll call it A, B, C, D. Now, what we're doing is we're saying, OK, let's take our scenario. I'm just going to move this a little bit over if I can. Don't make it big. OK, so for example, let's start with meat. Well, we want to figure out how many sandwiches worth of meat can be cut in an hour. We can cut 200 ounces per hour and there are four ounces of meat per sandwich. So our simple math calculation would just be 200 divided by four. What we're going to add into our definition here is what if we could speed that up? So what if we could increase that cutting process by a percentage and we'll call that percentage A. So that's the extra piece you see in this formula here is we multiply it times one plus some percentage. So for example, if we could figure out a way to do our meat cutting twice as fast, then or increase 50%, you know, 20%, whatever we're increasing, it would be times 1.5 or 1.2 to show that increase. So that's what our formula is showing here. Now let's look at vegetables. In fact, there's no calculation to be done here. You can cut 25 sandwiches worth of vegetables in an hour, so 25. But because we want to do some scenario testing, let's multiply that times one plus whatever percentage we can increase our vegetable cutting. So maybe we can go twice as fast, half 20% faster, whatever, right? OK, and then let's look at our bread. So bread, we make 24 loaves in four hours. If we assume that one loaf is one sandwich, then 24 divided by four is kind of an estimate in terms of how many loaves uh, per hour. And we can look at how do we speed that up by multiplying again times one plus a percentage. Okay. Then our last piece here is the assembly time. And what it says, you can't see because my head's in the way, is that it takes five minutes per customer. So to figure out how much per customer, let's assume one customer per sandwich, just to simplify life, 
anytime you make assumptions on anything, write them down, specify them, because if those assumptions need to change, then your calculations need to change. So we take 60 minutes in an hour, divide by five minutes per customer. We can figure out exactly then uh, how many minutes for the assembly per sandwich. And because we want to be able to do some scenario testing, again, let's multiply it times one plus D. Okay, so let's dump in that definition. So let's assume no changes. So we're at normal time for all these processes. So A, B, C, and D. We're not adding anything to them. So if we do that, when we say, okay, give us the capacity where we're not adding any percentage to anything. So we're just doing our meat at 200 divided by four, veggies at 25, bread at 24 divided by four, assembly at 60 divided by five. And what we're doing is having it give us the minimum number because you are gonna be constrained by your bottleneck. Whatever is the slowest part of the process is what is going to limit the amount of sandwiches you can produce. So if we do that and type that in, we get a capacity of six. So we are only able to make six sandwiches per hour. And the limiting factor, if you were to run this and do 200 divided by four, in fact, we could just quick pull up a calculator if you want, or we could do it in Python. Actually, let's just do it in Python. Why are we doing it in a calculator? Let's add here. So you can use Python to just do a calculation. 200 divided by four is 50. So it's obviously not the meat that's the problem. Vegetables, 25. There's no calculation there. 24 divided by four is where that six comes from. So we can see what's limiting our production is that creation of bread, okay? So our capacity is limited. Now we can try other scenarios. So what if, for example, we did not change the meat, so we're adding zero in terms of our efficiency, we're adding nothing to the veggies, okay? But what if we can do a 30% increase in the bread, okay? So if we can do a 30% increase in the bread, we're making our C value 0.3, so we're adding one plus 0.3, 1.3 times the current method uh, to see if that changes our capacity. The rest we'll leave at zero. We can see that that creates a scenario now where we can produce 7.8 sandwiches per hour. And you can play with other scenarios. So for example, what if, what if we increased our meat production 15%? So let's make A 0.15, the rest are seeing no change, so we'll make them zeros. And if we run that, so by making our meat cutting 15% more efficient, notice it has no impact on our capacity. And it has no impact on our capacity because the bottleneck is the bread cooking, the baking. It doesn't matter if you're more efficient at, at cutting meat, it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't get you any more, buy you any more time because there is enough um, of buffer, um, there's enough idle time, enough slack we talked about in project management that exists uh, while you're waiting for the bread to cook. Same thing, let's say for example, we don't touch the meat Let's say we don't touch the vegetable cutting. Let's say we don't touch the bread, but we can make our assembly 20% uh, faster. So we're going to add for this D section here, a 20% increase. Notice when we do that, it still doesn't help us at all because it's the bread that is the bottleneck in the production process. So when you think about, well, what does Subway do? Subway produces a lot of bread right and they're built they're producing it in large quantities so that they have enough for the day so you're not waiting those four hours for the bread to cook and that way they can reduce the bottleneck we can think of it as parallel processing we add more stations where they're making bread so bread is no longer the bottleneck 
If you can do that, then you switch what's the bottleneck to something else, the limiting agent in your production process, and then maybe can focus on whatever that limiting agent is now. If it's assembly, make it more efficient. If it's meat cutting, make it more efficient. Maybe there's tools, technology, techniques that will make you more efficient. But it doesn't make sense to put any extra effort into becoming more efficient in a part of the production process that is not the bottleneck. And so what we want to do, let me just go back to the slides here, is you want to outline your production process. You want to figure out what is the bottleneck in the production process, and that's where you want to focus on being more efficient. That will give you more capacity. And then reassess. Has the bottleneck changed?